wanted to just kind of get, we haven't touched on all, uh, wondered your theory, or your, not theory, but your view on a full earth flood, and then what about the lines as you touched on what I see as Genesis 6 with there's a Sethite or an angelic view, um, and what your thoughts then are. Well, this is a lot of questions. I mean, uh, let's yeah, pick well, your most important one. Well, the flood, with the flood account, and then going to Seth and uh, Ham and Jephet, is that right? Or Jeff, whatever. Um, where's ge 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 genealogy go? To? Geology. Ge yeah, where does that go through that? Yeah, so, so I'll start by saying that I'm not a geologist. There's a really good book that just came out. It's called... Uh, uh, the Grand Canyon, a Monument to an Old Earth, but written by a couple friends of mine, Ken Wolgamuth, uh, Greg Davidson, and a few others. I really recommend this. Um, I've learned a lot by reading that book. It has a ton of beautiful pictures. It's honestly a really good coffee table book. That's what we have on our coffee table at home. I really, really recommend this book. I'm not a geologist. I will say that, that um, we have to first of all think about how to answer that question from a Christian point of view before we even look at the science. And I think the starting point is to recommend, uh, recognize, and until we get to this point, we can't even think about Genesis clearly, that our faith does not hang on this question. Our faith hangs on Jesus. Then the next question we can ask is, like, how have Christians thought about this through history? Because if they haven't all thought the same thing, then what our plain reading is maybe isn't the plain reading. And what you find out is that Christians and Jewish people throughout history have thought a whole wide range of things about that. And we can ask, why now? And it turns out that the English translation is very different than the actual Hebrew. When we say earth, we mean the globe, the whole earth. But it actually says the whole land, right? Eretz. Eretz, the whole land. So this is actually a big problem now. So we've been reading this in English, and what actually is a poor translation that they didn't have, which actually starts to explain why people have seen this differently than us. So... The question is, like, I think there's enough ambiguity in that text to wonder if, and, and also to be clear, they didn't have satellites back then. They didn't know the shape of the earth. They didn't know the extent of the earth. You know, how would they have even known that it was the whole earth? They didn't even have a concept of what the earth was. Okay? So we have that very modern word which invokes the idea of a, like, a, like a spherical globe, and then we say that the whole earth was covered with water, okay? But that is definitely not the view that they have in their head, <laughs> okay? They have a view of, like, there's land up here, there's things up there, and I can see things in different directions. And he's writing from his perspective, and it turns out it only takes around, I think it's around 17 or 16 miles in one direction, and you can't see, the, you can't see anything but water, all right? So... I mean, it's just hard to imagine, like, if they saw that, how would they know it extended beyond their sight? And then we can ask them, you know, so I just say, like, that's a possibility. And, and, I, and I think that's probably, I, I mean, if the most historical account is that is what they're saying. And now, then we can go look at nature to see if there's evidence of it extending beyond his view. And I would just say that we don't see evidence of that. We see evidence, uh, we don't see evidence of a global flood. So from my point of view, I see ambiguity in scripture. And then, uh, I mean, I'm not a geologist, so I'm not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you on this. I'll point you to those things, but I, don't, I do not see evidence of a global flood either. Well, the genealogy of Noah's three children, I guess that's kind of, you had said 3,000 years ago is kind of this, you know, expanse in, uh, and I just wonder if there's anything leading to, you know, more of not two people, but... Well, so once again, I think six. we see a couple uh, hints in that story. It actually talks about one group of people that exist before uh, the flood mm -hmm. that don't go in the ark and that are still there after the flood, which is, once again, a clue that maybe this isn't quite as expansive as we originally thought. And of course, when you switch the word earth for the word, you know, land, land. it starts to become, make a lot more sense. I think also, uh, you know, so Hugh Ross is a great place to go for this. This is like most old earth creationists will reject the global flood because of, of geology. And what they'll say, and I think there's maybe some legitimacy to this too. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if we're going to say this is a historical account, which maybe you would dispute, but that's, let's leave that aside for a moment. Um, one way to look at this is that, uh, that all the people they knew died, and there really is a genealogy from them. That doesn't mean there wasn't other people that they didn't know. So, uh, so like, I mean, like, like the questions that we care about often aren't even the ones that are answered by science. 
and we kind of think that if what one like extrapolation into our scientific world doesn't hold up and it all falls apart, that's not necessarily true. I mean, I, I would just say that like, you know, I don't know if we know exactly all the details, either from science or from, you know, or from, you know, theology. And I don't know why we're getting hung up on these really wild extrapolations to what we think science should see when science doesn't appear to see them. 